All right, 605, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to workshop two of the Market Octavia Living Alleys project. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking everyone for taking the time out of your evenings to participate in tonight's virtual presentation. Uh, everyone's feedback is going to be essential in our goal of providing the Market Octavia area with living alleys that are beneficial to the community. Uh, so we have a lot of information for everyone today, uh, so we will do our best to get through this quickly to allow everyone some time to ask questions at the end. Uh, quick introduction, my name is Arun Bhatia. I am the project manager of the project. Uh, myself, Patrick Race, and Winnie Chang will be presenting today, and we also have Bill Bulkley on the presentation. Uh, Patrick Race is leading the landscape architecture efforts of the project with the support of Winnie and Bill. Next slide, please. One more. Okay, so the objective today is to provide a program update, including budget and timeline for implementation. Uh, we'll report back survey results and the selection process from workshop one, and then we'll present concept designs and obtain feedback on these living alley concept designs. So here's our agenda for today, which outlines the objective I just mentioned. Um, in between some of our slides, we will have live polls, which will give everyone an opportunity to provide feedback on the information being presented. Uh, so I suggest everyone, uh, please do your best to stay active and answer any sort of polling questions we pull up. Um, and then we'll close out the presentation with details on the next steps of our program. Also, we have a Q&A function um, in the chat. So uh, feel free to answer or sorry, post any questions during the presentation, and then we will get to the questions at the very end. But it does help to do those while we're presenting, so we're not receiving a slew of questions at the end. So poll number one, uh, please let us know if you attended workshop one. Great, so it looks like most people have voted. Um, why don't we go ahead and look at the results? Okay, so we have a, a fresh group of folks here to talk about living alleys, welcome. All right, so let's move on to program information. So it's nice that most of you are new here. So we'll start off by describing again, what is a living alley? So a living alley is a narrow pedestrian oriented street that is designed to focus on livability instead of parking and traffic. So typically this means we're creating a street primarily for pedestrians and bicyclists, as well as a space for social uses. Uh, this can be considered an urban living room, as in when you enter a living alley, you feel the sensation that you're in a lively, homey, activated space. Uh, in the later slides, I'll go over some examples of previously completed living alleys in the area uh, to give everyone an idea of what has been done and what is possible. So the Living Alleys programmed, uh, it has transitioned from planning where it lived for about a decade and now for the first time it is under the direction of Public Works as a capital project. And our team here is gonna be providing implementation of this vision to ensure it becomes a successful program for all future phases. Uh, the program currently has $4 million um, allocated uh, from the Market Octavia impact fees, which the COCs has, CAC has approved to fund the Living Alley Public Realm improvements. Uh, full funding will continue to come online through fiscal year 2023-2024 and will be apportioned each fiscal year. So essentially each year over the next four years we'll be receiving a portion of the total four million. So because we're receiving funding in phasing we have our implementation timeline here which is based on our funding and typical design and construction durations. So workshop one occurred on June 24th where we introduced the project to the community and asked that they complete a survey to better understand their needs. So we have completed draft concept designs to present at workshop two today using that data. And moving forward, we will finalize these concept designs into a 10% design drawing package to be presented at workshop three sometime in January, 2021. 
And moving forward, phase one construction will begin in January 2022 or around there. And then as construction of phase one is occurring and as more funding becomes available, we can currently begin the design of phase two. Workshop one report back. So here's our workshop one feedback. So on the left, we have a map of identified or map of alleys identified as priority uh, with the alleys selected for phase one highlighted in red. So we can see Brady, Colton, and Ivy here uh, highlighted in red. And then all other priority alleys are highlighted in a light bluish, light blue. So completed living alleys are then highlighted in light purple. And so the hub and market Octavia area are highlighted uh, just to give you an idea of the entire program area. And so looking at our three color coded blocks, we can get an idea of where we've already improved uh, in the light blue and where this, where this phase of the program will, will be improving in the red and then where, um, where we're going to be improving in the future. So in, these, in terms of types of improvement, the data shown on the right, uh, it shows the spread that the community wants to see as each phase of funding comes online. So 17% would like to see one alley with extensive improvements. 19% want to see many alleys with light improvements. And 64% would like to see a few alleys with moderate improvement. So there's definitely a heavy leaning on many, or sorry, a few alleys with moderate improvement. And the top five types of improvements the community wanted to see from workshop one feedback are sidewalk planters, string lighting, street lights, public art, and pedestrian lighting. So the results of crunching this data uh, was really the deciding factor to select three alleys as we felt the types of moderate improvements desired by the community could be realistically spread across three alleys with the funding we have. So tabulated here is our, also from our workshop one data. So the uh, data so sorted by stakeholder input. So stakeholder input represents the number of stakeholders who selected a block to be their priority block. So we had input from over 200 stakeholders and we were very happy with the turnout from workshop one. Um, moving two columns over, we have our PCI score, which represents the existing pavement condition index. So our goal is to br bring improvements to an area with solid infrastructure. So areas with excellent are going to be preferred because we won't have to repave the roadway and whatever we do end up installing with our Living Alley program funding, uh, the community will be able to enjoy for a longer period of time. And uh, moving over to the right, we have our current development projects. Uh, so this was another criteria because this helps bring synergies to the project. Uh, we can uh, collaborate with developers and we can stretch our dollar further. Um, moving to the right, one more column in terms of ground floor condition. Um, ideally, we want to focus our efforts on areas with uh, higher retail open space uh, nearby so we can help activate the alleys between them. Um, moving one col column over to the right, we have the stewardship and stewardship allows us to collaborate with different groups that can help us maintain the improvements, especially if the community wants to see non-standard elements. And finally, the sixth criteria, we have our existing concept plans, which gives us a small head start on design. So when considering all six of these criteria, um, we also wanted to ensure that improvements were being spread out as in we didn't want to select two adjacent blocks or two blocks on the same street. So after tabulating the points uh, based on our survey data and in, uh, inputting into these six criteria, we've decided to focus our phase one efforts on Ivy from Laguna to Octavia, Brady from Market to Otis, and Colton from Goff to Calusa. So this further strengthens our plans of spreading these improvements out as it provides Hayes Valley with a living alley, but it also spreads improvements to south of market. So regarding one of our criteria, synergies with current development projects. So we have recently had meetings with developers from Gould Evans as well as from Strata regarding the Brady and Colton blocks. Uh, Gould Evans has provided us with insight on their past outreach events, as well as recommendations on how we could best reach out to these blocks for future events. Uh, Strata, who is responsible for the development of the east side of Brady, along with uh, many other portions of this area, uh, has provided us with a scheduling and phasing for their project, which is currently in the construction phase. So soon we'll be receiving construction documents that we will use to improve our concept plans. 
so that we ensure that we're implementing a living alley on Brady and Colton in conjunction with their active improvements. And this can help minimize the impact of additional construction on this block. And so just a quick FII, the map from Strata shown here is only a concept and final construction drawings will look a little bit different. And here moving on to some completed living alleys uh, within the Market Octavia area, which include Hickory and Linden alleys. So the images on the right are of new planting, lighting and art improvements that were constructed within these alleys. And are just some of the possibilities that we can impl implement either within our program or in conjunction with the building owners. So we're actively using these alleys to help set a precedence for our future designs. Uh, Patrick and Winnie will have more photos and examples of these different elements close up. Uh, that are possible. And so with that, uh, thank you, Patrick, for handling the slide changes and I'll let you take over from here. Great, thanks so much, Arun. Hi everybody, my name is Patrick Race and um, I am a landscape architect with Public Works. And as Arun mentioned, I'm joined by my colleague, Winnie Chang, who will be um, helping present the concept designs tonight. So we'd now like to walk you through the, the concept designs for each of the three alleys that Arun mentioned. And each, you'll see that each of the alleys has two concepts embodying different amenities, program and price points. And it's, you know, it's by no means a final design and it's really a beginning for conversation. So please, you know, keep those Q and A's coming or the Q's coming. Um, similarly, each concept isn't um, functioning in isolation. So if you like certain elements from each, there's an opportunity to mix and match to arrive at a preferred concept. And for each alley, keep both concepts in mind as I walk you through them because we'll be asking you live to let us know your initial preference. Um, and I, I know that it takes a lot of time to assimilate the concepts and their differences. So just to reiterate, all of these designs will be online on our website and we'll be asking in our survey for your feedback and impressions. So please, you know, ruminate, Take your time to digest the concept and really take a close look before providing feedback. But with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Let's see here. So we'll start with Brady Street, which is located in the south of Market and provides a link between Market Street and Otis Street. Um, this block, often known as the Brady Block, it's undergoing many changes, including the Plumbers Union development at 629 Market which will include a large publicly accessible open space known as Mazzola Gardens. Um, <clears throat> and I want to talk with my hands and show you via the cursor. Um, so because of this, we see great opportunity here to provide neighborhood connections to this public space amenity. So in talking with the community and stakeholders, Brady Street as a living alley is envisioned to be a calm, safe and green neighborhood connector, both in terms of access to open space but also to Market Street and potential development sites elsewhere in the hub area like 33 Golf. <clears throat> and so in this way, Brady Street is providing a strong secondary uh, network weaving through the block. And the two concepts shown here are very similar, but they differ in a couple key ways and we'll walk through to, to get a closer look at what's going on. But just briefly as an overview, concept A on the top is the most cost effective, providing medium level improvements that increases planting, permeability, lighting, and roadway safety through a chicane, which is a lateral shift in vehicle lane. And I can see that we already have a question just regarding access to private garages and um, surface parking lots. No access to parking or private garages will be um, changed in any way. So that access will be maintained no matter what. Um, the bottom concept, concept B, it's a little bit more cost intensive, but you get additional amenities consistent with what the Market Octavia Plan Amendment, or formerly known as the Hub Plan, proposed for this street. And so that includes a raised uh, intersection and programmable area at Colton Street. And decorative paving not only at this intersection, but within the roadway as well. And as you can see um, by the number nine key dot on both the plans, they both plans call out opportunities for private facade art like murals, um, which are already going on in the area. Um, and this could be something that could embody the, the Psycho City movement and the guerrilla murals that this area is known for. But we'll discuss the mechanisms for private partnerships later in the presentation. So let's zoom in to each concept. Um, taking a walk through concept A, we can start with Market Street on the left side of your screen. Um, this concept really keeps the sidewalk and roadway structure basically as it exists today, but it improves upon it by introducing enhanced greening, including infill tree planting um, with the olives that already embody Brady Street. 
larger tree wells for increased tree health, permeability, and sidewalk planting potential, which was a number one community priority, as Arun mentioned in the previous slides. <clears throat> it also introduces special paving within what we call the furnishing zone uh, of the sidewalk, that area between the main path of travel and the curb. And you can also see in this concept, parking alternates per block. It's switching sides at Colton. And this is a way to calm through traffic, which may be using um, this road as a cut through from Otis to Market. Moving right from Market Street, you can see this concept also includes raised crossings across Stevenson and Colton. And this really enhances pedestrian crossing safety, but it's also a way of cueing cars and their drivers, letting them know that this is really a special alley and that they should slow down and be alert for bicyclists and pedestrians. And you'll notice some alternative lighting that spans the roadway. Um, much like you'd find in a European alley. But beneath those lights, um, we're proposing corresponding paving bands to add visual interest and character to the roadway. And then finally at Otis, you'll find an extended sidewalk planter that could be a place for integrated seating, um, increased greening, and a potential gateway element welcoming you into the Brady block. And narrowing this entrance and exit into Brady at Otis also increases pedestrian crossing safety as well as slowing cars and prepping them to enter the alley environment. In walking through concept B, you can see more intensive roadway changes. So for example, a raised crossing at Market Street and Otis are now present. Um, and that provides that safety and transition space that I mentioned for the raised crossings in concept A. And these were also recommended improvements brought forward by the hub plan. And also like Concept A, infill tree planting uh, and planter areas are offering additional opportunities to green the alley and provide greater permeability and um, potential integrated seating opportunities. Moving right from Market Street, you can see that parking now shifts every mid block instead of every block. And this creates a finer grain transition space for the vehicle lane. And that creates a feeling of a more intimate alley environment, thus, you know, again, slowing vehicles to safer speeds. You can also see that the roadway, uh, the main roadway is conceived to have a decorative element, perhaps stamp color concrete, similar to what other South of Market alleys have. But the main difference between concept A and concept B is the raised intersection at Colton, which you can see at the lower left of your screen. And this has also been proposed by the hub plan and it would provide a special node at the crossroads of Colton and Brady and provide direct entry into Mazzola Gardens and some active space for festivals and formal events and pockets for amenities like um, seating or the bike share station that we show on the plan. It also integrates with nicely with a connector to Goff um, and any future development and the hub neighborhood as a whole via Colton Street, which we'll be talking about in a moment. So in addition to drawing on inspiration from the area's other completed living alleys, Brady Street draws on inspiration from these improvements, which give you an idea of what each of the elements I mentioned might look like. <clears throat> so with those concepts in mind, just, just off the cuff, we want um, your initial impressions as to what concept you're, you're leaning towards. And um, we're doing this live, so we'll launch another live poll. Thank you, Winnie. Um, so you can see how others feel as well. And I'll go ahead and change the slides so you can um, see them side by side again. And no need to think too hard about this. We just kind of want to get a, a gut impression. Okay, so it looks like about half of you have voted. So keep them coming. We'll give it a few more seconds. So if you haven't voted and you have a, an opinion of one way or the other, let us know. Okay, great. I think we can go ahead and publish it. Okay, so it looks like people's uh, initial impressions are that concept B may be a better fit for the neighborhood or they're interested in advancing that concept forward. Great, thank you. And we'll go ahead and uh, move on to Colton. I'll pass it off to my colleague, Winnie Chang, who will be talking about Colton Street. Thanks, Patrick. Um, as Arun mentioned in how we selected the alleys, Colton Street was a natural addition when looking at the Brady Block. 
Its good paving condition and compelling connections to golf and future development sites make it a natural add-on to Brady Street improvements. What's perhaps, perhaps most special about the alley is that it's intimate, has great sight lines, and the potential for adjacent properties to, provi to provide facade art opportunities. Next slide, please. In looking at Colton Street, we wanted to keep it simple and tease out the strength of the alley as a programmable, pedestrian-oriented link to Brady Block's future, Brady Block's public space amenities and the hub neighborhood as a whole. We're looking at two different concepts that accomplish this. Next slide, please. Concept A introduces the notion of a shared street or curb of street that allows for the mixing of modes, vehicular, pedestrian, bike, etc., and creates a slow street meant for strolling and enjoying. You can see that a decorative paving treatment is proposed for the ground plane, which may be a colorful thermoplastic inlay into the asphalt. And we're also looking at alternative lighting, which may require a private partnership to provide something like string lights, which are so conducive to cozy alleys such as this. Walking left to the golf intersection, this concept also proposes bulbing out into the already generous golf street to provide a more legible gateway into and out of the Brady Block. It also provides us opportunity to provide additional tree plantings, planter areas, and banded sidewalk paving. No traffic changes are being proposed and it would still be lightly trafficked one way out, of, one way out onto golf. Next slide, please. Concept B also proposes the decorative paving and lighting treatments described for concept A, but structures the street slightly differently. The concept, this concept proposed to make the first half of Colton Street from Brady pedestrian only, closing this area to vehicular traffic. This is something that was also proposed as part of the hub plan. A pedestrian oriented portion ties in nicely with the raised intersection concept for Brady, providing that seamless connection to Colton. The closure of half of Colton to traffic would, could be a permanent condition or part-time, creating a safe space for activities, uh, programming which may tie into what's happening at the Mazzola Gardens, the ballet school, or other neighborhood events. Local access to residential garages, the latter half of the block, would be provided off of Gough Street. Concept B is also proposing a raised crossing across the mouth of Colton at Gough to facilitate, facilitate safe pedestrian crossing and to provide a visual gateway into and out of this alley. As you can see, for both concepts, oh, sorry, can we, next slide, please? Uh, uh, as you can see, for, um, for both concepts denoted by the number nine, we have identified blank facades that may be candidates for facade art. Again, perhaps embodying the flavor of the guerrilla murals the area used to be known for. You can see similar element inspiration we found with Brady, but we build on that further with the shared street and pedestrian only street examples. Um, you can see corner sidewalk extensions, which concept A proposes as being uh, potentially structured with planting and sculptural elements as this photo of Ringo Alice illustrates. Next slide, please. And now we can initiate the uh, live poll for Colton. Is everyone Wait, able to see? I'm oh, sorry, Winnie. Oh. <clears throat> is everyone able oh, yeah, to see like... the concepts or is my dialog box smack dab directly over it? That's okay. Sorry. Uh, I see the concept. I see the concepts fine. Yeah. It looks okay. like 68% of people, uh, folks that voted. So we'll uh, pause the poll here um, and share the results. So 
it looks like 68% of you guys prefer concept A and 32% prefer concept B. Great, thank Great. you. Thank you. Thanks, Winnie. Um, so let's jump to the Hayes Valley neighborhood. There was a lot of interest in Ivy Street between Octavia and Laguna. And we know that it's capped by retail spaces on both ends. And this alley is nestled within a residential area with many garages and front doors fronting onto the alley, which already has a vibrant neighborhood feel and this wonderful tree canopy that you can see in the photo. So the idea for Ivy Street was to accentuate and amplify the opportunities for neighbors to come out and enjoy this front porch while creating a calmer and safer alley. And so as with Brady, the concepts illustrated here embody slightly different designs and price points, but have many similarities. So just overall with concept A, it introduces a large corner plaza at Octavia, uh, increased tree planting and planted space. Concept B also introduces a concept originating in the Living Alley's toolkit, the raised living zone mid-block. And we'll talk about what that is in a second. Um, concept B also introduces decorative treatment, not only for the plaza and the mid-block area, but the entire roadway and a raised crossing at Laguna. So let's take a closer look at each of these. Concept A focuses on providing more space at the corners for enjoying Hayes Valley establishments near Patricia's Green and Octavia. So starting at Octavia in the lower right, you can see that this plaza includes decorative paving bands, integrated seating and planters, and it also integrates with a raised apron at the mouth of Ivy, providing that sense of arrival and traffic calming, similar to what already exists in Linden Alley at Goff. And you'll notice that parking again switches sides mid-block, a move designed to slow through traffic down and provide that slight visual shift in vehicle lane, keying in drivers that this is, this is a slow residential alley. New tree planters next to the curb um, <clears throat> increase uh, the opportunities for greening and additional tree canopy. And they're modeled on the planters seen two blocks east at Goff, and we'll show you an image of that in a second. Moving towards Laguna, infill tree planters of ginkgos uh, to match those that are currently there will help create a continuous canopy with nice yellow leaves in fall. And there might also be the potential for decorative paving and alternative lighting at the Laguna end, creating that visual interest and a natural transition out onto Laguna. So concept B, as with concept A, B introduces the idea of an expanded corner plaza with an area for seating and programming, but it doesn't bulb into Octavia. It also proposes that raised entry apron and decorative concrete as you enter the alley, providing that visual gateway. Similar to con concept A, parking shifts sides, facilitating that traffic calming that I mentioned earlier. But perhaps the key difference between concepts is the mid-block raised living zone. Again, that concept from the Living Alleys Toolkit. And we see this as an extension of the neighbor's front porches. So you can see two clusters of tables and chairs illustrating activities that would happen here. Because this is a through street, we would design safety barriers such as reclaimed granite blocks or something similar to protect these activities. But neighbors could come out and set up their chairs in the evenings to talk with each other, um, host informal events. Really the activation potential here can, can really be anything. Um, but we see it as a neighborhood amenity that neighbors can activate, use, and take ownership of. Moving down the alley towards Laguna, you can see that this concept also includes a decorative treatment for the roadway asphalt. Again, maybe a stamped texture or colorful thermoplastic inlay, which you'll see an image of in the next slide. And then finally moving to Laguna, you can see the same infill ginkgos as concept A and a raised crossing across Ivy, again, facilitating that safe pedestrian crossing and transitioning vehicles pulling out uh, onto Laguna, exiting the quiet residential alleyway. So again, some familiar inspiration here is with the other alleys. Here you can see examples of those infill ginkgo trees that I mentioned, the Ivy Street planter that I mentioned. This is the example Ivy at Goff. So we might wanna do something similar. And then as well, the, the colorful thermoplastic inlay. This is kind of what it looks like embedded into the asphalt. And this is actually Fern Alley here in San Francisco. And you can also see what examples of a corner plaza or a raised living zone might look like. So with that, this will be our last live poll for the evening. But tell us what you think about Ivy Street 
and if you have a preference for concept A or concept B. Let me go ahead and vote now. Hi, Patrick. This is Bill. I just wanted to address one comment. Uh, we've received many uh, question and answers and chat questions. So we started answering live, but we will get to all your questions. This is especially for Larry Berger, who said that his question hadn't been answered yet. We just haven't been able to keep up with all the questions. So we will get to them. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Responses are still rolling in. Give it a few more seconds. So if you have any feelings towards one concept or another for Ivy Street, let us know. Okay, why don't we go ahead and show, show the results. Okay, so it looks like concept B has a slight edge over concept A in terms of elements that people liked. So um, yeah, thank you, thank you all for your responses. Great, so I wanted to talk a little bit about community-led improvements. As Arun mentioned, you know, this is really the first um, city project for living alleys. You know, we have the funding in place for Market Octavia impact fees, whereas past iterations have been more community-driven via grant opportunities or monies from the supervisor's office or, or whatnot. Those mechanisms are, are certainly still on the table. Um, you know, we're just operating under our own public works-led uh, implementation um, process from the impact fees. So there are several elements that embody a great alley, but the city cannot implement. And that's because it likely touches private property or requires a partnership with private property owners. And so here are some examples of that. It includes alternative lighting that aren't city standard. So looking at the catenary lighting across the alleys, um, kind of that European feel that I mentioned earlier. Here's an example of the lanterns and the string lighting that's uh, so popular in Linden Alley. And then we're also talking about facade improvements like murals and also artistic uh, fence treatments like this example from, I believe, Balboa Playground. Um, you know, we know that these improvements can help create a vibrant alley and we wanted to call them out as an opportunity for the community to become involved in pursuing these options, if so desired within these three alleys, but even um, in other alleys that we're not necessarily including with this first phase of implementation. So if this is something that you as an individual or group are interested in, please indicate that in the Q&A pane right now or our online survey, or you can reach out directly to Arun, whose contact info will be on the screen in a moment. But there are mechanisms by which fiscal sponsors and partner organizations have done this. And as I mentioned, Great examples already exists in living alleys. And so, again, the string lights in, in Linden Alley and the gorgeous mural and string lights in Hickory Alley are examples of that. Um, so that being said, while the city can't pay for or maintain these alternative improvements, we're here to help figure out how the community can champion this if it's wanted. So please let us know with your feedback. So next steps, I know, you know, this was a lot of information quickly and I wanna reiterate that if you're able, please take some time, digest this information, take another look at these concepts on our website and let us know what you think. And there's a couple ways to do this. Um, we need your help selecting a preferred design for each alley. So like the last workshop, we have a, an, an online survey where you can provide feedback on each concept and element you saw here tonight. And as Arun mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we're gearing up to return to you in late January after all the feedback has been collected and assimilated and workshop three will present a preferred design for each alley. And we're also gonna be out in the neighborhood in the alleys we saw today and hope to have a socially distanced discussion with those constituents um, and residents and, and employees who want to learn more or just talk with staff. So we'll have boards posted with the same information you've seen tonight um, just to, to have more conversation about it. So the details of the site walk are on your screen. We hope you all can join. Um, we're having it on a Saturday to catch folks who might not have been able to join a weekday meeting. Um, November 14th, 2020, weather, weather permitting. Um, we'll be in Colton at Brady Street from 10 to 11 a.m. 
and then from 12 to 1 p.m. we'll be in Ivy Street between Octavia and Laguna. So we hope to see some of you there. So thank you for your attention and participation tonight. Please let us hear from you either right now in the Q&A pane via email to Arun or feel free to use your phone to access the QR code shown on your screen. That'll bump you directly to our survey if you feel like you're ready to go and, and offer your feedback that way. But with that, um, you know, I'll turn it back to Arun and we'll open up the remaining time for Q&A or any stories or impressions you'd like to share about what you saw tonight or the alleys in general. So thank you. Great, thanks Patrick, thanks Winnie. So should we just start going down these remaining? I tried to answer as many as I could with Bill. Hi, um, Arun, I'd be happy to uh, kind of summarize some of those. Um, okay. So I think we've talked about cars will be able to drive through. So that was Dr. Cho's um, uh, question, that cars will be able to drive through. Um, can you talk about uh, maintenance for the group of the streets and sidewalks? Also yes. From yeah, so maintenance of any standard elements would typically be handled by the uh, public works uh, operations. So, you know, I've already, any standard project we have, uh, operations is willing to maintain, and even some non standard elements, so long that they are within some sort of paving order or uh, existing construction order, that we can, you know, they need the resources or the elements to be able to maintain and replace some of these things. Uh, for non-standard elements, uh, we would need to work in conjunction with stewards and uh, building owners, uh, something like um, non-standard non -standard or alternative lighting um, or murals. Uh, those type of elements would require uh, partnerships with building owners, first of all, to install, and then second of all, uh, to maintain. Thank you. Um also, uh, there was a question from Ayana and also from Tom H about uh, how how this is paid for and the development impact fees from the hub. Are those being applied to this? Yes, so impact fees are coming in from the hub. So that's why the hub and Market Octavia, are, it's, it's a conjoined area. So we're looking at uh, all blocks within the hub and Market Octavia. Uh, Paul Romito asked, can we, uh, the olives are existing, they're a little um, messy, can we have other options for that? And along with that, I might add, uh, um, there's several people, Rich and um, uh, somebody else has asked about, uh, a Noel asked about uh, none of the above option. So what happens if people want don't want to choose either of these options or, yeah, I think regarding the none of the above option, um, you know, for today, we're just beginning to understand the general direction. Uh, the different concepts Winnie and Patrick presented, uh, one was more robust than the other. So we were just trying to get a feel of, you know, are we looking at moderate heavy, moderate light, and just kind of the direction we want to go. And we can always take a combination of both of those elements and uh, implement a combination of both. And I think especially coming out to November 14th walk, uh, seeing, the, seeing um, the street in action, with the concept designs in front of us is really gonna give us an idea of what the community wants to see and what's gonna work best. And then in regarding the olive trees, uh, Patrick, do you want to uh, take that one? Yeah, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. So olive trees were an initial consideration just given the canopy that's already existing in Brady. We don't wanna to touch uh, thriving trees, obviously. So. We're looking to match what's currently there, but we're also open to other ideas and we're still ruminating as we go through the design process, what might be most appropriate uh, for the street. And cleanliness is, is one of those things, as is biodiversity. So we'll continue looking at it, but um, thanks for your comment and uh, we're noting it. Uh, another, um, Larry and Ayana both had a concern about the strata development circulation, traffic circulation, and how that is going to affect the Brady Street and access off of Stevenson. Um, so the concern that, that Larry mentioned was, is that understood uh, and, and um, is that follow, do our designs for 
the alleys follow that traffic pattern. So as part of the, the development agreement with uh, the plumbers union and just everything that's going on around Brady Block, um, there are, you know, environmental impact reports associated with that. And part of that is analyzing the traffic impacts from these new developments, including, you know, rideshare and TNCs, so the Ubers and Lyfts. Um, as to my knowledge, there are no changes associated with direction of flow two way versus one way within the Brady Block as a result of that development. So that's really where living alleys can help is to calm the traffic and really slow these services down uh, enough so that it, it's really conducive to the pedestrian oriented environment that we're working with. Um, so I can't answer the specifics around uh, traffic regarding to the regard in regards to the development, but I can say that living alleys really do a great job of mitigating some of the negative externalities of fast moving cars um, and the like. Uh, and Paul was asking, can we review the plan for tra traffic flow on Stevenson? I'm not exactly sure, but that was related. I think, um, Patrick, you just answered, answered that well. Uh, Larry Berger did say traffic calming measures is exactly what we need, and he was happy to see that. So that was his, his uh, follow-up comment on that. Um, both Rich and uh, Barbara are concerned about the removal of parking spaces. Is there any other parking expansion planned? So through, <clears throat> excuse me, so through the design process, we've been very careful about touching parking. And I think we understand the, the major role that it plays in terms of getting people to their homes and to work. And so there are instances where we are reconfiguring on-street parking but there's, you know, there's a, a positive trade-off for that. So we're looking at expanding more pedestrian-oriented space, offering amenities on the street like bike share stations or space for um, events to happen, and other nice things like planters, um, which is something that was asked for via workshop one. So it's kind of a, it's a really about balancing um, the positives with parking removal. But we're we're trying to be as careful as we can. Um, to offer amenities that make sense, uh, unfortunately, at the cost of potential parking removal. Uh, I, uh, let's see. Dr. Cho asks, uh, are we using clean energy, renewable energy, solar lights? Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. Um, so the non-standard lighting alternatives could very well be solar. Um, for city projects, we have to uh, meet you know, certain lighting levels for roadway lighting and pedestrian scale lighting. And we have a certain palette that we already work with, many of which are um, very energy efficient. Um, I don't know, you know if it uses alternative uh, energy as you referenced in your question, um, but that's certainly something that we can consider for those community-led improvements that I mentioned earlier. Just a follow-up, um, Britt and Amanda are both interested in um, the, the uh, public-private partnerships that you mentioned for mural options and lighting, the alternative lighting. More of that, please, Britt says. Uh, Rosemary uh, says, will existing power poles and old lights be replaced as part of the Living Alley project? So as part of budgeting and you know, breaking down this limited budget that we have, lighting upgrades um, are on the table. Um, we would love to use existing power poles wherever possible just to um, you know, reuse what we have so it doesn't incur cost or time under construction. So we're definitely looking into that. Um, we're also looking into potential additional lighting with new power poles and, and fixtures as well. So. Um, Yes, we are hoping to use old infrastructure. Uh, there are a couple people who are interested in the intersection at Brady and Otis. Um, they like the idea of the raised entry apron and decorative paving there to slow traffic. Um, I think that was that is included in one of our options. So that's one of the pieces that can be, you know, 
included if that's um, uh, an option. Also similar to Octavia. But there was another comment um, about, I believe, I'm sorry, it was about uh, visibility and pedestrian uh, visibility when pulling out from Brady onto Otis. Um, mm -hmm. So can we just wanted to be, uh, the, the writer just wanted to be concerned that we will be uh, cognizant of that uh, situation and be careful of visibility and lines for pedestrian traffic. Great, thank you. I mean, the biggest question, I mean, that people are concerned about is homelessness, really. And, um, you know, have, have, has there been a history of living alleys helping or hurting the homeless situation? And how, how can these improvements um, on these proposals, you know, affect homelessness? Will it be an attractive nuisance, I believe? Uh, some of the um, fear is. Sure, sure. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And, you know, there's a lot of challenging social social challenges that are happening out on the street. And, and you know, it's a citywide um, challenge and is reflective of a whole bunch of, you know, larger things, housing affordability, displacement, all those things that, you know, as public realm improvements come online, we can't necessarily solve those social challenges. So I, I certainly understand um, the concerns around that. What living alleys can do is they can bring small scale improvements to the street to enhance the quality of public life and add little details that people can look at and enjoy um, in the everyday. But it doesn't wholesale restructure the street. So what you're not seeing in these examples are wholesale streetscape improvements like wider sidewalks and a bunch of room given over to pedestrians. It's about balancing um, these small scale improvements like small planters for additional greening and permeability, infill tree planting to create a richer canopy, um, safety improvements like raised crossings and adding texture like uh, pavers and textured concrete and asphalt. So while we are offering little areas for enhanced activation and programming, it's not on a super large scale. So I would say that as an attractor, it's probably not gonna be much different than it is today in terms of um, additional space that potential encampments can inhabit. Um, but it does bring that detail and excitement and enhanced lighting and just that, that extra layer that so uh, embodies the Living Alleys program. And at the same time, it does calm traffic. Um, so that's another positive that comes out of it. Um, so I wish I had, you know, a solid answer <laughs> for you of, you know, how to solve homelessness and how to solve a lot of these social challenges that are coming out um, and really they're out on our streets right now, but I don't have that easy answer. But what, what I can say is that investing in the public realm, especially when looking long-term um, for Brady Brock specifically, there's going to be a lot more residences at this location. You know, we have as a city 4,900 new units coming online in the Market Octavia and Civic Center areas. So there's going to be a lot more people on the street. There's going to be a lot more eyes on these spaces, and there's going to be a lot more demand for these high quality um, public spaces like Mozilla Gardens and just nice streets to stroll through, walk through to reach your house and your work. So I think it's about planning for the future while also recognizing um, the social challenges that are out there today. And, and uh, sort of the multiple questions, not specifically homeless, but uh, Dr. Cho and Rich Fiddler also asked about safety and security in particular. So I think the positive uh, improvements, the new development, having more people on the street, lighting, those would help to address the security. Um, let's see. There seem to be some others. Um, uh, Leif uh, asks, would like to us to speak to the tie-in on the bicycle network from Mar on Market and Otis Streets, and is Brady intended to be used as a connector? 
Great, thanks for bringing that up. <clears throat> so there are improvements as associated with the hub plan to add um, that, I believe it's class two stripe bike lane on Otis Street. And then Market obviously is getting the, the better Market Street improvements at this location. Um, Brady Street will not be part of the bike network, but it does offer a secondary route for people who may want to cut through from Otis to Market Street or to access some of the internals of Brady Block specifically. Um, while it does offer that secondary cut through, it won't be um, on the bike network proper. So going back to um, circulation, uh, w uh, Larry pointed out that we are showing on our plans, uh, Stevenson is two way, um, it, but I think it's, it is one way at the moment. And uh, another writer asked, if Brady between Stevenson and Colton could become one way. So those are not in our current designs. Any uh, plan? And then similarly, why not include Stevenson in the, in the options? Yeah, um, so I believe our graphics, uh, that may have been an oversight. I believe Stevenson, as you said, is one way towards Brady Street. Um, we're not proposing any circulation changes aside from either part-time or permanent closure of half of Colton Street as one of our proposals. Um, we, you know, we would have loved to have done more alleyways. Um, you know, eventually, hopefully all the Hayes Valley and South of Market alleys will receive some living alleys treatment. Unfortunately, the budget was just limited and our workshop one results and criteria of selection that Arun highlighted earlier led us to the three selected alleys. And I think over you know, the five years um, and phase two improvements, hopefully we can get the three of these done, um, but we'll need to closely monitor and assess as, as budget and uh, implementation starts happening. Um, but we can certainly eye Stevenson as a future uh, improvement. So Amanda, uh, speaking on Ivy, we haven't had many comments on Ivy. Uh, uh, Amanda was concerned that um, the option uh, concept B uh, that she has uh, would limit her access. I believe that would be the um, mid block. Would that be the mid block um, table? Yeah, so um, if you're referring to garage access, um, all curb cuts and garage access would be maintained. So the pockets that I mentioned earlier um, would be essentially outlined by safe traffic control devices. So like granite blocks or something that I mentioned just to structure the space, but it wouldn't inhibit any vehicular movement or access to these garages. Um, Britt has a comment uh, about the park. Um, perhaps the developer has plans to include some controls to maintain the safe and secure park, especially at night. So um, as I understand, it's a publicly, you know, publicly open a private space, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so, sorry, go ahead, Bill. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're continuing our conversation with Strata development as the development progresses, because um, if possible, we want to you know, overlap with their schedule as much to minimize disruption. But as part of that conversation, we're figuring out what the management structure is for Mazzola Gardens. But yeah, to, Brit, uh, to Britt's point, um, yes, Mazzola Gardens will likely be managed by um, whoever is managing you know, the entire 1629 development. And along with that would include some security. That's our assumption, but we will be confirming that with Strata. Um, Noel brings up um, uh, another project in the neighborhood, which is the, the Otis Street. Um, it was supposed to be a street food uh, park and it had to be completely fenced in. So he was sort of referencing that, or he was uh, ref referencing that to um, this project. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very different uh, type of project, but um, do you, can you talk, do you want to talk to that? Uh, sure. Patrick? 
Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And um, it's a very different site condition, you know, that I think Macoppin hub is what it's called, is bordered on one side by the freeway, essentially. Um, and it's not very active on the other two sides. So that's, that's one thing. Um, and I'm not sure what space specifically you're talking about, or if you're talking about living alleys in general, uh, potentially having that problem. I think the way the living alleys are structured, it offers um, you know, sidewalk and roadway improvements that are independent of activation and programming, but it also sets aside space for that to happen. So I think activation and programming is key um, to the success of these alleys. And we've, we've tried to outline that wherever we can, especially in Brady and Ivy Street, where more of those activation nodes occur. Um, but I would say that's crucial for the living alleys to, to thrive. So it looks like it's seven o'clock. We probably have time for one more question. If there are any that um, we haven't covered already. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, so there are there are several that are kind of touched on other things, but one of them uh, uh, from Noel again is uh, about the small businesses who are concerned about. Um, we've talked about parking and access to the stores, but they're also concerned about noise and ground level activity with benches and seating next to their offices. Mm -hmm. So, is there? They're concerned again that having people come and sit on the street would affect their business. Right. Or their office space. Yeah, I think um I think that's that could definitely be a concern if there are negative behaviors um associated with that that seating. I think we don't obviously we don't want to design public spaces that are exclusionary. We want to be as inclusive as we can and, and part of the living alleys. Uh, improvements, some of the elements do include seating and areas to to congregate and spend a little bit of time because that's the idea of, of kind of being in these rich public realm spaces. But um, definitely take our survey and let us know if there are specific locations or you see something on the plan that's, like you said, adjacent to your small business or office, and let us know your concerns. And um, we'll look into how it's currently designed in, in the concept phase. And as we move forward to a preferred design, uh, we wanna take that into account. I'm not seeing, um, there are a lot of different things, uh, but that really was it. I think, uh, I think Stevenson is coming up again, but I think we've, We've talked about that. I think we could look into whether that traffic around Strata is, is addressed. Um, All right. So, yeah, I think uh, that's about it. 703. So thank you, everyone, for attending. Thanks, everyone, for, you know, inputting as many questions as you could in this short time we had and uh, inputting your information in the chat. Thanks, Patrick, Winnie, Bill, for uh, presenting today. And so yeah, just visit our website, complete the survey, and uh, hopefully everyone, we can see you on site on November 14. So thanks everyone and have a great night.